Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today I'm going to be answering a very commonly asked question within the chart history community, which is how do I make my own chart history video? Now this is a very valid question as there's not a lot of tutorials out there showing you how you can make your own chart history video. So today I'm going to hopefully show you how to make your own chart history video that you can go ahead and upload for everyone else to see. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be doing a Taylor Swift 1989 chart history. So, once you've decided what you want to want to make your chart history on, you're going to want to head over to Google Sheets. Now, I will go ahead and leave the link in the description for this so that you can just get there easily and just go ahead and sign in with your Google account. Now, once you've signed in with your Google account, it should just look like this. If you've never made one before, uh, it will probably be blank, but you can just see my example one right there. If you haven't already made one, you're just gonna wanna press blank, and once you do, it should take you to just this blank page. The very first thing you're gonna wanna do is head up to this top left corner where it says A and one, and you're gonna wanna put name there. So the reason I do that is because all of this row right here is just going to be where the names of the songs go. So it's kind of a little outline to show you. And then right under name, you're going to write image because this is where you're going to upload the images to show up next to the song on the chart history. Now you're going to leave a blank space on the third and we're going to put in the date on the fourth. Now before you can put the date, you obviously need to know when the song charted before you can put the date. So that's when we are going to go get the data. Now, most people use the Billboard Hot 100 to get their data from. However, there are other kind of chart history videos too, like the Global 200. But the most common one is the Billboard Hot 100. So I'm just going to be using the Billboard Hot 100 for this example. If I go back here, you can see I'm doing a Taylor Swift 1989 chart history. So I'm going to want to figure out when the lead single for the album was released, just so I know when around the time it probably first charted. So I go here and I look when was Shake It Off released and I can see August 19th, 2014. So we're going to go back to the Billboard Hot 100 and we're going to find that date in here. Okay, you can see August 19th, 2014 it's right there. However, here's a little tip. Most songs don't chart right when they get released. It's usually three Saturdays after they are released is when they first chart. So if you can see, here's the 19th. And then here's the first Saturday, August 23rd, the second Saturday, August 30th, and then the third Saturday. This is usually when songs chart. So here we are, September 6th, this is the third Saturday. So Shake It Off should have charted this week. Let's see. Oh, there we go. See? Shake It Off, Taylor Swift, new this week. So I'm going to head back to my spreadsheet. I'm going to remember this date. It was September 6th. And I'm going to go here where the date is. So I'm going to write 9 slash 6 slash 14 because that was the first date Shake It Off charted. I'm also going to write Shake It Off's name up here in the name row. Okay, so we can see this is the first time Shake It Off charted. It was number one on this week. Now you're going to want to fill in the rest of the dates all the way down here. Now an easy way to quickly fill this in is to click on the four highlight down and then you should see this little box in the bottom right corner what you're going to want to do is click on that and drag it all the way down here and that should automatically fill in all these dates for you without having to um, write them in yourself so that's a very good little tip that you can quickly do stuff okay now we're going to go back to the billboard hot 100 and continue getting the rest of our data so let's go to the 13th and see Okay, Shake It Off was number one again. Now, a little tip that I would like to give you all is if you do Control F, and you're just gonna write the artist name that you're doing a chart history for. So we'll do Taylor Swift, and it will highlight every time Taylor Swift is mentioned on this website. So you can see Taylor Swift, Shake It Off, there we go. And if you press enter, it'll just take you directly to it. So rather than having to scroll through this whole thing to find out, don't buy Ed Sheeran charted 34 on this week, all you have to do is write Ed Sheeran and boom, it'll take you right to it. Okay, so you're gonna wanna continue doing the same thing, filling out this data. So let's go to the 20th and you can see Shake It Off is now number two and there's no other songs charting. So remember it was one on the 13th and now it's number two. Okay, so here I am on November 1st and you can see there's now a second entry this week. Shake It Off is number two but let's see what this other entry is. Out of the woods. Okay, so now you're gonna come back here and you're just gonna write 
Out of the Woods or whatever the second song that charted is for you. And you're gonna find November 1st and we're gonna write 18. Now, like I said, you're just gonna keep doing the same thing until you finish the chart history. So yeah, just go ahead, keep filling out the data from the Billboard Hot 100 and I will do the same thing and I will see you guys when I am done. Okay, here you can see I finished filling out all the data. A lot of songs started and you can see all this data that I filled out here. So once you've done the same and you've filled out all of your data, you're going to want to go up here and make sure you name it something memorable, like that you'll remember it by Taylor Swift 1989 chart history is what I named mine. And then you're going to go back up to this little top left corner and press file, download, and then Microsoft Excel. So this is how you're going to download it. So you can go ahead and press that and you can see Right here, it's downloaded Taylor Swift 1989 chart history. So once you've downloaded it, you got all your data and everything, you're going to want to go to a website called Flourish. Now, I will leave you a link down below to my template for Flourish. Once you've clicked that, it probably will ask you to create an account. So you can go ahead, create your account with Google, whatever you want to do. And it should take you to something that looks like this. Now, this is just my template I use to make all my chart history videos. So once you've got this, you're going to go up to the top right corner where it says duplicate and edit, and you're going to go ahead and press that. Now it's going to want to confirm if you want to duplicate and edit this, just press duplicate and edit. And it should take you to this. Now what you're going to want to do is upload all your data from the sheets into Flourish. So you're going to go up here where it says data, go ahead and press that. And then if you come over here, it should say upload data. So you're going to want to go ahead and do this. Make sure you select the file that you downloaded this Excel spreadsheet to, and it will put all the data in here for you. So I'm going to go do that really quick. Okay. So I've just imported all my data. It'll ask you if you want to import just yes, just click import. And then I'll say, okay, 193 rows were uploaded. And then you play next. Okay. So now what you're going to want to go do is go up to the left where it says swap rows and columns. And you're just going to go ahead and do that. So it should look something like this. Now, one thing you're also going to want to check is it says image column. Make sure image column is B, name column is A, and then score columns. This is going to show you what columns it's going to use for the chart history. Now, make sure the very last column is here. So you're going to want to do C as the first one and then go to whatever the end is. So the last, the end for me is CN. So I'm going to change that to CN and it should be purple. That means that it will use that data for the chart. So just make sure all the times data appears that fits a little purple box above it. The last thing in the little data tab you're going to want to do is upload the image. So for me, I'm going to look up 1989 Taylor Swift because that is the image I want to put in is the album cover. So you can see I got the 1989. You're going to go ahead, right click this and do save image as. Go ahead, name it to whatever you want. I'm going to name it 1989 Taylor Swift. Once you've gone ahead and downloaded that, you're going to head back to Flourish and you're going to want to do where you see the image and shake it off me or the image in whatever song it is meet. You're going to right click it and go down to here where it says upload file and you're just going to want to choose the file of the image that you want to upload. So I'm going to select 1989 and it will load for a second and there you go. It should have it. Now rather than having to upload it to all the other ones, I just suggest copying this little link it gives you. Make sure you copy it perfectly and just fill it in for all these other songs. Once you have done all that, make sure all your images are done, all the boxes are purple. You should be done in the data tab and you can head back to preview. Now this will give you a little preview of what your chart history looks like. I'm just going to do control R that refreshes it. So it restarts the chart history. So you guys can see what it looks like. This is my template, like I said, so it has all my preferences for it, but I will give you guys a little tutorial on how you can tweak it to whatever you want. So scoring type, you're going to want to keep this. Don't change this. Make sure it's competition, higher score loses and scores. And then, yeah, make sure view shows zoomed, invisible stages is six. And then chart sizing. You're going to want to make sure this is the same as well. You can tweak, you can technically tweak this one if you want, but I just recommend keeping it like this. Controls, make sure it says hidden and hidden. Um, unless you want to choose which color the songs are, 
then you don't need this. I just keep the songs whatever it chooses the color to be. Line styles. Now this is something that you can customize if you want. So this can change the width of the little line. See, you can see if I up it a lot, it makes a really wide line, but I don't think that looks very good in my opinion. You can also make it smaller if you would like. See, you can see it's a little smaller now. I just usually keep it at 0.6 though. I feel like that's a good one to keep it at. Or maybe it's 0.7. No, it's definitely 0.6. <laughs> okay, the next thing you can change is the opacity, which is like the little thing on the edge of the line. I usually keep it at 0.9. You can make it skinnier or bigger if you want. Um, see. I just usually keep it at 0.9. I feel like that's an easy one. And then the curve. This one is very annoying sometimes. Make sure it's always normal curve because it can look really weird. Like if it's straight, straight isn't too bad. But when it's like step or if it's like overflowing curve, it's hard to see right now, but the overflowing curve is quite annoying. So I would just recommend keeping it normal curve. And then you can just make sure all these other things are the same. Now we have the circle styles. You can adjust the radius of them so you can make them bigger, make them smaller, whatever you want. See, that's a really big circle. So I just recommend keeping it what I have or whatever it shows it is on yours is what I usually keep it at. Okay, so now you can see Y axis. Um, unless you're doing like a global 200, you're gonna wanna keep this at 100 so that you see the bottom here, it's kinda cut off, but that says 100 right there. So the max is gonna be 100. Unless you're doing like a global 200 video, then you can change the max score to 200. So it will give you all the way down to 200. But if you're just doing a Billboard Hot 100, make sure to keep the Y axis Y axis's max score at 100. And then same thing with X axis, just leave this all the same. Now animation. This controls the speed at which the line moves. So you can see I have mine set pretty slow, 2000. I usually keep it at 2000. But if you would like, you could make it even slower. Like that. See, it doesn't move very fast. Or you can just make it go faster if you would like. So if the lower you make it, the faster it goes, as you can see. And the higher you do it, the slower it will go. You can tweak this. You can tweak the layout if you would like. Um, you can like change the font and stuff. Um, I usually just keep this the same. But if you would like to tweak it, mess around with it, go ahead, have fun. Okay. The next thing is the header. Now this is going to give you a little like thing on top that lets you know what this chart is about. So I'm going to go ahead and name it Taylor Swift 1989 chart history. And you can see it should pop up there. See at the very top, Taylor Swift 1989 chart history. So there you go. You got that now. Okay. So once you've got your header, if you would like, there's also footers that you can add. I usually don't add them, but go ahead. Feel free to mess around with it. And then lastly, accessibility, just make sure it says hidden. You don't really need to mess around with that one unless you want to. Okay, so once you've tweaked the data to however you like, you are done with your chart history. But before you can upload it, you obviously have to record it. Now Flourish unfortunately does not have an option where you can just download it. You have to screen record them. So I will show you guys how to do that. I recommend using OBS to screen record these. That's usually what I will use. I will leave the download link in the description. So unfortunately, I'm using OBS to record right now, so I can't show you exactly how to do it. But if you look, you should see under the thing where it says scenes, press plus, and that will create your new scene. And then head over where it says sources on that scene, press plus, and then do a window capture. And then once you've done that, you can double click on the window capture and choose the window you would like to capture, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm window capturing the flourish. So yeah, before you record it, you, you can see you have all this stuff on the edge. You probably don't want that to be in your video. So what you're going to do is head up to this top left corner where it says full preview in new window. And here you go. Here's a full window. It will show you with your chart history in it. Now, I recommend doing F11. I'm not going to do F11 right now because then it will block out my uh, recording software. But I recommend doing F11. That'll make sure like all the stuff on the top gets blocked out. You can see like all these tabs you have open and it will just show this. And then you're probably going to want to put your cursor in the top left corner so you can see these lines. You don't want them to be there. So I would just recommend doing your cursor there. And then you can go ahead and start recording. Right. So once you're done recording your chart history, you're pretty much done. All you have to do is go ahead, put it in your editing software if you would like to edit it to add some music when songs are charting. 
and add some effects too. I will leave the links of the effects that I use in the description below. I usually use like a golden effect when songs are number one and a little star effect when stuff are in the top 10. I also recommend you can do a little text that says top 10 or number one and then another text that says like the era they're in. So like I would put 1989 era in that little text. So those are just my little advice on what to do when you're editing these. But yeah, once you've done that, you're done. You can go ahead and upload your chart history video. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial and it was helpful, please make sure to leave a like and maybe even consider subscribing. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I will go ahead and answer them as soon as I can. If you'd like to support me, you can check my links in the description below. I stream on Twitch twice a week, so I would love to see you there if you guys would like to stop by and say hi. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.